Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Construction Guru. Today we will be looking at few of the basic knowledge for civil engineers that they must have. Before we can start, please do subscribe to my channel by pressing the subscribe button and press the bell icon for getting the updates for the latest video. So let's get started. A civil engineer does many activities at the construction site and there are certain works which are repetitive. So we will see some points, tips and tricks which a civil engineer should remember for faster calculation as well as quick solution to the construction site problems. Let's start with a few general points to remember for civil site engineer to make the construction work easier while maintaining the quality of construction. A reference to IS 456-2000, the minimum and the maximum area of reinforcement in RCC members are as follows. The grey portion you can see is the concrete column and the red thick vertical line is the longitudinal reinforcement. Longitudinal reinforcement in a column should not be less than 0.8% and more than 6% of the gross cross section area. But maximum 4% is preferred due to a 50% overlap. Prefer less percent to avoid congestions and to improve the bond. Longitudinal reinforcement in beam minimum bar area intention is 0.85 B into D upon FY where B and D are the dimensions of the section and Fy is a characteristic strength of the rebar in Newton per mm square. Also, maximum rebar is 4% for the cross section area in compression and tension. Now, reinforcement in slab. In LSM, that is limit state method, minimum area of rebar is 0.12% and 0.15 in WSM, that is working stress method. Now, the minimum size of longitudinal reinforcement bar in column shall be 12 mm. Similarly, minimum size of the longitudinal reinforcement bar in beam shall be 12 mm. Now, let's see the reinforcement in slab. Main bars in the slab shall not be less than 8 mm for HYSD, that is high yield strength deformed bars, or 10 mm for the plane bars. And the distribution bars shall not be less than 8 mm or more than 1 8th of the slab thickness. Now the next point is lap splice or simply known as lapping is not allowed for a bar having diameter more than 36 mm. Now let's learn about lapping. Lapping in compression zone shall never be less than 24 times D where D is the diameter of the small bar. Lap length for the column is generally 45 T. Now let's see an example to better understand the above concept. Two bars of diameter 20 mm and 25 mm is to be lapped. Then the lapping length will be calculated as below. Among the two bars mentioned above, 20 mm bar is of smaller diameter. Hence, substituting the value in the above formula 45D, we get 900 mm as the lapping length. A minimum four number of longitudinal bar is needed in a square column, and minimum six number of longitudinal bar is required in a circular column. As you can see in the image, the chair is in the red color. The chair helps to maintain the distance between the top and the bottom reinforcement in the slab. For chairs, minimum 12 mm diameter bar are to be used and the maximum spacing between chair is 1 meter or 1 chair per meter square. Hook for stirrup is 90 for one side where D is the diameter of the bar. Now let's see how to calculate the number of stirrups. At the bottom of the diagram, we can see the clear cover. The red vertical lines are the longitudinal bars and the black horizontal lines are the stirrups. The formula for calculating number of stirrups is clear span upon spanning plus one. We need to know few things before we calculate the number of stirrups. So for that, let us assume a few parameters for better understanding. First, we will assume total length of the column to be 1250 mm. Second, clear span, which can be calculated by using the formula total length minus 2 times the clear cover. So, our total length is 1250 mm and generally we consider 25 mm as a clear cover. So, substituting these values in the above formula, we get 1200 mm. Now, the third assumption will be center to center distance between the CFs, that is 150 mm. Substituting the assumed value in the above formula, we get 9 stirrup. Now let us see how to calculate the weight of steel bar per meter length, which can be found out by using the formula d square by 162, where d is the diameter in mm. So now let's see a few examples. The first one is 
Calculate the weight of a bar having 16 mm diameter and a length of 10 meter. Simply substituting the value of D in the above formula, we get 16 into 16 by 162, which comes out to be 1.58 kilogram per meter. Now for 10 meter length, simply multiply the above value that is 1.58 kilogram per meter with 10, that is 1.58 into 10 is equal to 15.8 kilogram. Similarly, we can calculate the weight of a bar having 25 mm diameter and length 10 meters. 25 into 25 upon 162 is equal to 3.858 kilogram per meter. Now for 10 meter length, simply multiply the above value with 10. That is 3.858 into 10 is equal to 38.58 kilogram. The minimum thickness of an RCC slab is 125 mm. The dimension tolerance for cubes is plus or minus 2 mm as per IS 516-1959 and IS 1006-1982. The standard cube size is 150 mm by 150 mm by 150 mm. Maximum free fall of concrete is allowed to a maximum of 1.5 meter as per the IS code. If a concrete is dropped at a height higher than this, then it becomes very difficult to prevent concrete from segregation, displacement of reinforcement, also it can damage the faces of the formwork. Water absorption of a brick should not be more than 15%. Bricks often absorb water from the fresh mortar when they are laid dry. If the rate of water absorption is high, it may affect the hydration of the mortar and the result is poor bonding between bricks and mortar. The suction exerted by the units is an important factor affecting the fresh mortar and consequently the properties of the mortar join and at some point of time, the strength of the cement mortar used in plaster will be gone which will lead to cracking and can lead to the removal of the plaster as the binding strength is gone. pH value of water should not be less than 6. We will see it in a graphical representation below. A neutral pH is 7 which is what you find in natural fresh water. Anything above 7 is alkaline, anything below 7 is acidic, Portland cement, concrete, binding agents has a pH of 11 making it alkaline. For cements to be effectively hold the various components within it, it should have a pH of around 11. The problem is that the Portland cement does not resist any acidic compounds well. As the pH of acid decreases below 6.5, concrete deterioration increases. Solutions with a pH of 3 or lower are most harmful. The more concrete deteriorates, the more porous it becomes. The compressive strength of bricks is 3.5 Newton per mm square. In steel reinforcement, binding wire required is 8 kg per metric ton. Now let's see cement story. Cement shall be stored in a dry place on a raised platform about 200 mm above floor level and 300 mm from the walls. Cement bags to be stacked not more than 10 bags high in such a manner that it is adequately protected from moisture and contamination. Now let's see cement setting time as per the IS4031 part 5. The initial setting time of cement is 30 minutes and the final setting time of cement is 10 hours or 600 minutes. Now let's see what is the density of a material. The density of a material is its mass per unit volume. It is also called a unit weight of a substance. It is expressed in kilogram per meter cube. Now let us see the names of few material with its respective density. Bricks have a density between 1600 to 1920 kilogram per meter cube. Concrete blocks have a density of 1920 kilogram per meter cube. ACC blocks have a density between 550 to 650 kilogram per meter cube. Steel have a density of 7850 kilogram per meter cube. Reinforced concrete has a density of 2500 kilogram per meter cube. PCC have a density of 2400 kilogram per meter cube and water has a density of 1000 kilogram per meter cube. Curing time of RCC members of different types of cement are as follows. For ordinary Portland cement OPC it is 10 days. Super sulfate cement is 7 days. Mineral and admixture added cement is 14 days. So let's see what are the tests on fresh concrete. The first one is slump test that is for the workability of concrete. The second test on fresh concrete is compacting factor test. And the third test 
इस वी बी टेस्ट Now let's see the deshuttering time of different RCC members. Main RCC elements in building construction consist of footing, column, beam, and slab. Shuttering is a temporary structure which is used as a mold to pour the concrete. It is a vertical or a horizontal arrangement made to keep concrete in position until it gains strength and shape. Shuttering is provided on the beam sides, beam soffit, which is a lower part of the beam, and slab soffit. Now let's see the time required for removal of form work for different RCC components. For column walls or any other vertical component, form work can be removed after 16 to 24 hours. Now let's see the time required for removal of soffit form. For slab, the minimum time required for removal of soffit form work is 3 days. And for beam, the minimum time required for removal of soffit form work is 7 days. The props have to be refixed after removal of shuttering. Now let's see the condition in which we can remove the props of the slab and the beams. If the slab is spanning up to 4.5 meters, then we can remove the prop after 7 days. And if the slab is spanning over 4.5 meter, then we can remove the prop in 14 days. Now for beams, if the beam is spanning up to 6 meters, then we can remove the prop after 14 days. And if the slab is spanning over 6 meter, then we can remove the prop in 21 days. So these were the few basic knowledge points for civil engineers. Thanks for watching and please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.